I just found out my wife is a dirty cheater. And you know what? I'm going to do something about it. Before she finds out that I know, I'm going to ruin something so close to her. Hey guys, look, I'm not the best writer or anything, so bear with me. I just need some perspective, you know? See if I'm being paranoid, a jerk, or if I've got reason to be suspicious. Let me go ahead and lay out the scene for you guys. Married for 15 years, two amazing kids, a dog named Rusty, and a house with a white picket fence. Ah, uh, never thought I'd be the guy doubting his marriage, but here I am typing this out at 2am downing my third beer. Lately, there's been issues, signs, I guess. It started off simple. My wife, Mary, began working late a lot. She's a corporate lawyer, so it's not unusual. But I mean a lot. And when she'd come home, she'd be so damn distant. Like she was miles away, even when she sat right next to me on the couch. When I'd asked her how her day was, she'd just mutter something about a tough case and head straight to bed. Now I tried shaking it off. Maybe she was just stressing, right? Well, work can do that to people, I know that. But then came the frequent business trips, weekend getaways with colleagues. Okay, fine. But when she'd come back, she'd have no stories, no anecdotes, no tired rants about work. It was like she was in another world. You know what was the weirdest part? Her phone? She was always on it. And God forbid I got close when she was texting, she would twist the screen away so fast. I swear she was gonna get whiplash. Now, I'm not a snooper, but dang, it got me wondering. One day, curiosity got the cat. I picked up her phone when she was in the shower, and before you judge, I didn't actually go through the messages, just wanted to see her recent apps, and guess what? There's this one app, some kind of messaging app with a weird blue logo I've never seen before. No notifications or anything, but it's there. Right on her home screen, and the weird part, when I asked her about it later, pretending I was looking for a game for our son, she flat out denied it was on her phone. She said that she's never heard of it. And the cherry on top? A couple weeks back, I found the dang hotel key in her purse. No, she was not on a trip. No, she did not have an explanation. She just kind of froze, gave me this look like, well, and said she must have picked it up by mistake when she went out with her friends. I've talked to my buddy Dave about this. Now, Dave's been through a messy divorce himself, so he's probably not the best guy to ask, but he's pretty darn sure something's up. Told me I need to confront her, get the truth, but then... There's a part of me then uh, thinking I'm making mountains out of a molehill. What if she's really just stressed and here I am brewing up a damn soap opera in my mind? I don't know, guys. Am I being paranoid here? Am I the a-hole for doubting my wife? Or am I just an oblivious idiot? Man, I hope y'all can give me some clarity. Update number one. Hey guys, it's been a couple weeks since my last post, and damn, things have taken quite a turn. I did not think it could get any more twisted, but life gets a way to surprise you, right? I still have not confronted Mary, but I've got a hell of a lot of more to share. So, after I wrote last time, I decided to take a back seat and observe a bit. No rash moves, no confrontations, just see if there were more signs or maybe if I was simply overreacting. Well, let me tell ya, it got crazy. First off, that dang mystery messaging app, I took some advice from y'all and did a little digging. Turns out it's some kind of encrypted chat app, popular for, get this, discreet affairs. Now, I'm not saying everyone on there is doing something shady, but it sure raised an eyebrow. Then came the big shocker. One day... I decided to, well, you know, take an early day off from work. Surprise the wife. Maybe. Take her out for lunch, and you know what? Light up the romance a little bit, maybe. Well, the only lighting up was my damn blood pressure. As I'm driving into the streets, I see Mary getting out of a sleek black car I've never seen before. And you know who's driving? Greg. It's Greg. Uh, 
This dude's been a close family friend for years, attending our wedding even. Even took our kids camping last summer. They shared a brief hug, not exactly scandalous, but something in her smile just did not sit right. My gut's telling me something is off, but my brain's saying, man, it's just Greg. Ugh, they've been friends since forever. So I don't confront her then and there. Instead, I pull back, park around the back block, and watch. They chit-chat a bit. She walks inside our house and Greg drives off. Now, here's where it gets really crazy. I remember we had this old security camera. You know, one of those doorbell cams that we never really used it, just bought it. And when there was those off break-ins in the neighborhood a year ago. But I thought, hell, why not check it? Maybe it's caught something else I've missed. It took me a bit to figure it out, but I finally got the thing to work. As I'm scrolling through the past recordings, there's a lot of Greg's car pulling up in our driveway. Sometimes in broad daylight, sometimes late at night in one clip. Man, it still keeps me up. Mary and Greg standing real close having what looked like a super intense conversation. And then, just before he leaves, he hands her a small box. I could not see what was in it. But she looks shocked, almost teary-like, so here I am. More confused and hurt than ever, part of me wants to go ballistic. Confront her, ask her what the hell's going on. But another part, it's terrified of the truth. Is she having an affair? Is it something else? And why Greg out of all people? I've been distant, trying to piece it together without blowing up. And Mary's noticed she keeps asking if I'm okay, if there's something on my mind. Every time I look into her eyes, I'm torn between anger, confusion, and the love I felt for her for 15 years. I still haven't said a word to her about what I know. What the hell do I do next? Confront her? Hire a PI? Talk to Greg? I need advice, guys. My head's a damn mess. Update number two. All right, I'm back. And man, where do I even start? These past two weeks, they've been a whirlwind of emotions, discoveries, actions. I've never thought I'd take. Buckle up, folks. It's a ride. So after my last post, I decided it was time to act. No more sneaking around or second-guessing myself. I hired a PI. Probably sounds a bit extreme, no? But I needed clarity, and I needed it fast. Within days, the PI came back with photos. Photos that crushed me. It was Mary and Greg in various intimate moments, holding hands at the park, sharing a kiss at a random cafe, and cozying up at the movies. It was clear as day. They were having an affair. Every picture felt like a dagger to my heart, and I confront her. The evening she came home from work, I just threw the picture on the dining table. She went pale, tears streaming down her face, stammering and trying to explain. She admitted to it, said it had been going on for months, said that she was lonely, and well, felt that we've grown distant, and Greg, well, he was there. Given her the attention that she craved, did not justify it, but that's her reasoning. Hearing her say all that, admitting to the betrayal, it hurt, but it also ignited a fury in me. Fifteen years of marriage, thrown away for what? Some fleeting moments of detention? The next day, I hatched a plan. Mary had always been proud of her lush garden, her sanctuary, and hours upon hours, days upon days, she invested in making it perfect. Every rose, every shrub was her pride and joy. So, I thought if she could destroy our marriage, I could destroy her little sanctuary. I, mate of mine, well, owned a landscape company, and after explaining the situation, he agreed to help me out. We waited, and waited, until Mary was out for the day, and by evening her precious garden was unrecognizable. Uprooted the roses, a shrub shaved down to the nubs, and her ornate fountain smashed to pieces. I wasn't proud, but man, in the moment seeing her face as she walked in and saw that devastation, it felt like a bit of a payback. She cried, screamed, and asked why I would do such a thing. I just handed her another batch of photos, and this time of her and Greg at some fancy hotel, and said, You ruined our love, and I ruined your garden? I wish I could say I felt satisfied, but honestly, I felt hollow. 
like I stooped to a level I never thought I would reach. I did not feel triumph, but just emptiness. Well, Mary took the kids and moved out for now, staying with her sister. It's just me and Rusty now, sitting in this big empty house surrounded by the wreckage of a once beautiful garden and a broken marriage. I still have that final meeting with my lawyer next week to discuss the divorce and custody arrangements. Guys, I'm really lost. What's the next step from here? How do I explain this to my children? Update number three. Hey everybody, thought I'd give you a final update about how things played out. I never thought my life would read like some dramatic TV series, but damn, it's been a wild few months. Firstly, the divorce. We went ahead with it and the meeting with my lawyer was intense, but thankfully, we're both trying to keep it as amicable as possible, especially for the kids. Joint custody is the plan, and while it's going to be a tough adjustment, I think it's for the best. Now, about the garden. Look, in retrospect, it might have been a bit much. It was done in a fit of rage and pain, I won't lie. Seeing her face crushed and broken as she looked at the garden, it hurt me more than I thought that it would. I mean, she was my best friend. She still is in some ways, and seeing her hurt, even after everything she did, was not as satisfying as I imagined. Well, it just added to the heaviness in my heart. To add to the drama, Greg reached out, sent me a long message, full of apologies and explanations, and honestly, I could not read past the first few lines. What's there to explain? I did, however, send him a very choice set of words, making it clear that he's out of our lives for good. It's one thing to mess around with a married woman. It's another when it's your best mate's wife. As for Mary... We've had a few heart-to-hearts, and it's clear our marriage was fraying at the edge long before Greg came into the picture. Maybe we could have tried therapy or counseling, but hindsight is always twenty-twenty, right? Mary admitted that the affair was a terrible choice, a moment of weakness. She's hurting, too, and not just because of the garden, but because of the life that we've lost. We sat our kids down, explained things as gently as we could, and it broke my heart. Seeing their confused faces, tears streaming down, asking if mommy and daddy did not love each other anymore. But we assured them that we both loved them, always will, and will always be there for them. It's just that mommy and daddy need to live apart now. As for the house, I'm moving out. It feels too big, too empty, and there's too many memories. Plus, I can't bear to look at that destroyed garden every day. I'll be renting an apartment nearby, so I'm close to the kids. Mary will stay in the house, and I've given her some cash to fix up the garden. It doesn't make up for what I did, but hey, it's a start. So, here I am, packing up my life, thinking about the choices I've made. I don't regret the divorce. It was necessary. Especially after the breach of trust, but I can't help but wonder if wrecking the garden was too far. Maybe it was an act of raw emotion, or maybe it was just petty. So, I turn to you folks, one last time asking, am I the a-hole for what I did for revenge? Would love to hear your thoughts about it. Thanks for being with me on this crazy journey. Comment number one from the original post and updates. Man, I totally get your anger, OP. Honestly, what she did was a deep betrayal, especially with somebody you considered a friend. Cheating is a low blow, and emotions run high in situations like that. You reacted, and honestly, I don't blame you at all. She shook the foundation of your trust, and while destroying the garden might seem a bit excessive to some people, it's just a garden, not the a-hole. Comment number two. This whole situation sounds like a mess. Mary should not have cheated, that's clear. But vandalizing her sanctuary is not exactly justice, OP. It's just more pain on top of pain. And Greg being the best man and then doing this absolute trash. Honestly, everybody seems so stuck here. The real victims is the kids. They did not ask for any of this drama. Comments? Number three. Well... I understand the pain of betrayal, OP, but destroying the garden was not the right move. That's just, well, a jab at Mary. 
but also a lasting visual scar for your children? You should have faced the issue head on, confronted her and taken legal steps if needed. Reacting with revenge might give mom a Terry satisfaction, but it does not make things right. Sorry, but you are the a-hole. In my opinion, since I've, well, narrated quite a few of these messy breakups on the channel, I've seen a whole lot of worse reactions than a garden being destroyed. So in my opinion, I don't think OP is the a-hole here, simply because the revenge or the retaliation could have been so much worse. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. I could see how somebody would argue that everybody sucks here because two wrongs don't make a right, but hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And OP knew how much, well, his significant other loved that garden. Guys, I do have another story that we're going to hop into, but first, if you are not subscribed to the channel, and you want daily revenge stories, just know it's really quick to click that subscribe button and it does help support me a lot. Here's the title for story number two. Am I the a-hole for pulling elaborate pranks on my neighbor who is so, so, so loud? Hey fam, I needed to get something off my chest. So I live in this oldish apartment building. Walls are kind of thin, but I knew that going in. Now, for a while, everything was chill. My neighbors were like quiet little mice, and it was the perfect spot for me to grind out my home office job and get some peace after a rough day. Then, the new guy moved in. He's in the mid-40s with a hairline that's been pushed back to the 80s and a wardrobe that suggests that he never left the era either. Well, the first night that he was here, I was jolted awake at about 2 a.m., by the blasting tunes of what sounded like an 80s, well, hair band concert. I'm talking guitar solos so wild that they could summon the dead. Like any reasonable adult, I thought, hey, maybe he's just excited about his new place, let him have his night, and things will get better tomorrow. <laughs> oh boy, I was naive. The next day, around lunchtime, while I'm at a Zoom call with my boss, the sounds of a screeching electric guitar pierce through. My boss gives me this, uh, what-the-heck look on his face and asks if I'm at a rock concert. Embarrassing, to say the least. I thought, okay, it's the weekend. Maybe this guy is just letting loose. It'll calm down soon. It never did. Every single day at the most random hours, I'd hear the pounding beats of a drum, the screeching of a guitar, and sometimes even what sounded like him trying to hit those high notes. Fam, let me be clear. This dude can't sing. It's like a cat giving birth to a chainsaw. I tried to be patient, left a few polite notes on his door, asking him to tone it down. Maybe turn the volume down to a thousand percent to like a uh, 50, but nada, no changes. Sometimes I even felt like he turned it up louder just to spite me. One day, I ran into him in the hallway, trying to be neighborly. I said, hey man, love your taste in music, but could you like just keep it down during work hours? Dude looked me in the eyes and says, music is my life, bro. If you can't vibe with it, maybe you should move. Hold on, move? I've been living here for three years. This guy rolls in like a rejected member of Guns N' Roses and I should move? Anyways, my friend thinks that I should just let it go and invest in some good earplugs or noise-canceling headphones. But guys, those things are not cheap. Plus, why should I adjust my life around this dude's never-ending solo concert? I've been thinking about taking this to the landlord or maybe even the police. But that seems so intense. I'm not that guy. At least I wasn't that guy. Until now. Here's the biggest twist. Last night, I went to another neighbor's place for drinks, socially distanced and all that. We were chatting, and guess what? I found out that Mr. Hairband has been complaining about me. Said that I walk too loudly. Walk? And that my TV's always blaring. I'm shocked, guys. My TV... I literally watch Netflix with subtitles because I'm scared of bothering neighbors. So, I'm at a crossroads here. 
part of me wants to just knock on his door and really give him a piece of my mind. But then again, I'm not a confrontational guy. Should I start a neighbor war? Ugh, let me know. Update number one. Hey guys, I'm here with an update. Strap in because it's a wild couple of weeks. Well, after my last post. Many of you advised me to gather evidence and talk to the landlord, so that's what I began to do. Started keeping a noise log, making notes of dates, times, and the type of, well, eruptions from Mr. Hairband's apartment. Even started recording some of it on my phone for, you know, audio proof, but things get weird. Last Tuesday. I was chilling on my couch, munching on some potato chips, watching Netflix with subtitles, obviously. Suddenly, there's a little knock at my door. I open it and there's this random dude all decked out in biker gear, looking like he's auditioning for a role of thug in an action movie. He grunts, Oh, you the guy who's got the problem with my brother's music? Wait, what? Is Mr. Hairband recruiting goons now? Before I could answer, a biker dude continues, Oh, listen, bro. Music is the soul of life. Let my man play. Don't be a buzzkill. He then rides off on his loud motorbike, which guess what? He revved for a good five minutes right outside my window for emphasis, I guess. Not gonna lie, I was rattled. But I was not about to be intimidated, so I continued with my evidence-gathering mission. Then the ultimate test of my sanity. Saturday night, 11 p.m., I started hearing voices and laughter, loud, raucous laughter, Looked out my peephole, and sure enough, Mr. Hairband's throwing a full-blown 80s theme party. I'm talking mullets everywhere. People are dressed in leopard prints, neon, and oh my god, the leg warmers. I could deal with the loud music, but this party was on another level. There was karaoke. Yes, karaoke. Imagine a group of drunk, off-tune people belting out lyrics at midnight. Frustrated, I decided to go knock on his door. So I took a deep breath and braced myself for confrontation, but just as I was about to knock, the door swung open and a super drunk lady dressed like Madonna said, Like a virgin! Almost stumbled onto me drink in hand. Hey, uh, are you here to join the party? Ah, uh, Mr. Hairband appearing behind her smirking. Oh, look who it is. The neighbor who can't handle a little fun. <laughs> Come on in, bro. Let's settle this like men. Well, I was caught off guard. The music, the lights, the people. It was overwhelming, but people, I could respond. Well, another guest, dressed as Prince, pulled me inside, handed me a microphone, and pushed me towards the karaoke machine. Sing, man. Let it out. I'm no singer. But with everybody's eye on me, I croaked out a few lines of Don't stop believing. People cheered, and my hairband laughed. It was weirdly liberating. But here's the twist. After my so-called performance, Mr. Hairband came over, slapped my back, and said, See? Music's not so bad. Maybe you should try it sometime instead of complaining. The whole room bursted out in laughter, and I left the party humiliated. Now, guys, I'm at a loss. Do I go nuclear and take all my evidence to the landlord, or do I find a way to coexist with this madness? I can't live like this, but what is my next move? Update number two. What's up, guys? It's your boy, OP, back again. And let me tell you, a lot's happened this week. First off, I went to the landlord. Evidence in hand, showing him the noise log, played him the recordings, and even told him about the random biker dude and the impromptu karaoke session. But guess what? Dude just shrugged, muttered something about I got bigger fish to fry, and walked away. Can you believe that? I felt like I hit a brick wall, and after one particularly sleepless night, when Mr. Hairband decided to belt out ballads till four in the morning... Something inside of me snapped. I decided it was time to give him a taste of his own medicine. But not with the noise. No, no, no. That's his game. Ha. Huh. I had to be smarter, more cunning, and I wanted to come up with a prank that was harmless but would drive him nuts as he's been driving me. After a deep dive into the internet, 
I came up with Operation Peace and Quiet. Here's the plan. Number one, Catfish Karaoke. I created a fake profile on this local karaoke meetup group, posing as a talent scout for a new reality show. I posted a surprise audition happening at Mr. Hare's band address, promising a chance to be on TV for anybody who could impress me. Well, what's the catch, right? The audition was by mail only. Participants had to send their CD or USBs of their best song, and I even hinted that 80s hairband cover had a special place in my heart. Number two, the glitter bomb. While doing my research, I stumbled upon a website that sends anonymous glitter bombs. For those who don't know, a glitter bomb is an envelope filled with a ton of glitter. When you open it, glitter goes everywhere and it's a nightmare to clean up. Well, ordered a bunch of to be sent to Mr. Hare's band address throughout the week. And number three, subscription madness. I signed him up to a bunch of annoying email subscriptions. You know, daily horoscopes, tips on how to improve your singing, newsletters on the history of silent medications. I may have also signed him up for a few trials here and there. The operation was in motion. Every day I'd hear him trudge to his mailbox, and every day I'd suppress my laughter as I heard muffled curses from his apartment. A few days right now into the master plan, and his mailbox was flooded with envelopes from hopeful karaoke singers, and I could hear his confusion each time he opened another audition. Who is sending these? The whole building was buzzing with whispers about Mr. Hairband's sudden talent scout career. But the cherry on top? It has to be the glitter bomb. The first time he opened one, his scream was so loud, I swear it echoed in the alleyways. Guys, I knew revenge isn't always the answer, but man, it felt good to level the playing field a bit. But now I'm wondering, did I do too much? Well, I guess he'll figure out it's me eventually, right? Update number three. Hey guys, OP here one last time. So much has happened and I think I need some advice. First things first, my revenge prank. It totally worked. For about a week after the glitter bombs, the karaoke auditions, and the crazy subscriptions, the noise level from Mr. Hairband's apartment went down. There were no more midnight jam sessions, no more unexpected biker visits, and definitely no more surprise karaoke parties. It felt peaceful, too peaceful. But then the awkward encounters began. Every time I saw him in the hallway, or even by the mailboxes, he'd give me this suspicious look on his face like he was trying to figure out if I was the one behind the pranks. Our silent stare-downs became a weird daily ritual. Neither of us said a word, but the tension, oh boy, it was thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. The weight of my action started to weigh heavy on my mind. I'd be lying if I said I did not enjoy the silence, but I began to feel kind of guilty about how I achieved it. I mean, sure, he was a pain in the butt, but did I go too far? It was during one of our silent standoffs that Mr. Hairband finally broke the ice. Uh, you know, I've got a hunch about who's been messing with me. Uh, but I, I'm willing to let it go if we can find a way to, uh, I don't know, live in harmony. Honestly, guys, I was taken aback, did not expect him to be so mature about it. But before I could respond, he added with a smirk, By the way, I, uh, I love the glitter. It added some sparkle to my living room. <laughs> I could only nod, slightly embarrassed, because we did not become friends or anything, but there was this weird understanding between us from then on. An unspoken truce, if you will. However, despite our newfound peace, another issue arose. The whole ordeal made me realize that my landlord was more interested in collecting rent than ensuring the well-being of his tenants. I felt like I couldn't trust him to have my back if another situation arose. So, I made a big decision. I'm moving. I found a new place across town better maintained and with a landlord who seems to actually care. As I packed up my stuff, there's a mix of excitement and a bit of nostalgia. I've had so many memories here, good, bad, and downright bizarre. But as I tape up the last box and take one last look at the apartment, my thoughts drift back to Mr. Hairband. Do I regret the pranks? No. But do I feel bad about them? Yeah, maybe a bit. 
After all, beneath the loud music and the wild hair, he's just a guy who's trying to live life, much like me. So, here's the final question. Am I the a-hole for pulling those pranks on my neighbor? While I don't regret standing up for myself, part of me can't shake the feeling that maybe I went overboard. Comment number one. Honestly, I'm shocked the landlord did nothing. It's their responsibility to ensure the well-being of their tenants. OP should not have to deal with this in the first place. If it were me and the shoes, I would have packed up my bags and moved out immediately. No peace, no rent, OP, you're not the a-hole. Comment 2. Okay, here's my take. Mr. Hairband, stop being so inconsiderate. Landlord, you had one job. To step in when needed, but OP, come on man, pranks? It's like watching three toddlers bickering in a sandbox. Everyone sucks here, pretty obviously. Final comment. Kudos to OP for taking things into their own hands. When the authorities, the landlord, aka, won't step up, sometimes you gotta be a bit crafty to reclaim your peace. Was it childish? Maybe. But desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm proud of you, OP. No, I do not think OP was the a-hole here. A glitter bomb, I mean, that wasn't the end of the world. But I think the biggest concern here would be the landlord. I mean, the landlord did not seem like he wanted to intervene at all. So we did see, towards the end of the story, OP decide, you know what, I'm just going to up and move out of here. So that did turn out to be the best case scenario. Guys, I do want to leave you with one question. If you've ever lived in an apartment or a town home or even a house that's close to another house, have you had problems with a neighbor? If you have, go ahead and drop yours down below in the comment section. Share your story. My name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate stories like this every single day. And this is Mr. Redito's Revenge Channel, where every story has some sort of karma or revenge. Go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya!